Hi, my friends, Scott Young here, and just thanks for taking a few minutes to talk about life and love and faith and just a time of Q&A, and you are always welcome to send your questions in. And if it's on a message or just on a life issue or maybe something from uh, the scriptures. Uh, recently, I was talking with a group of people about Noah's life of faith. And uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse seven says that Noah built an ark of safety that saved his family. And someone um, raised this question. Uh, I have a loved one that's living far away from God. They are living outside the ark of safety. And what should be my attitude, my actions to help see family members come and live a Christ-centered life? And that's a great question. And, it doesn't matter if it's a son or a daughter, a mother, a father, a husband, or a wife. We're interested in people connecting with God. And uh, I would say our attitude, our attitude should be an attitude of love. Our actions, of course, should be actions of love. Um, Jesus said, hey, you'll be known as followers of Christ if you love, especially if a family member already knows the story of Jesus, the gospel. That Jesus came down to ransom us on the cross and he bought us a life of freedom if we receive that. He died and he rose again, the resurrection. If they already know the gospel, don't keep bringing it up every single time. Uh, maybe every once in a while in a card or a letter just to remind them of the gospel. But basically you want to have an attitude of love. I don't think you're gonna argue them back into the kingdom of God. A good discussion I think is healthy, but I think prayers, I think the attitude of prayer and the actions of prayer has incredible power. And there's a lot of great prayers that we can pray. And uh, here's a few ways that I would just think about praying for people that are far away from God. One is Jesus tells an incredible story in Luke. Luke chapter 15, he talks about a, a family member, a son, a prodigal that left the father's house and uh, wasted a lot of his life energy and finally ended up in a pig pen. And then there's an interesting verse in verse 17 that says, he came to his senses. And that's a prayer that I think is great to pray for people you love, that they would wake up, that they would come to realize they were born for something better than a pig pen or whatever situation they found themselves in, and that it, be, it would be better in the father's house. And uh, this prodigal still had a lot of guilt and shame, but that was taken care of when he started walking back to God. God came, the father or the father heart of God came running towards that family member, wrapped his arms around them. And there was grace and there was forgiveness. And that's our prayer, grace, forgiveness. But they have to wake up from the place they have been to a new place. Another version says that they came to themselves. They were born to be in the family of God. And we just want people to realize that. Hey, you were born to be in the family of God. It's, it's God's plan that no one would perish, but that people would come into the family. So I pray that they would come to their senses. Another prayer I pray, prayer uh, I encourage people to pray is from uh, Jesus talking with Peter. When Peter was under a spiritual attack and Jesus said, Peter, the adversary, has desired to uh, sift you as wheat, as wheat, that's in Luke chapter 22, um, Satan. And there is a spiritual battle that goes on for all people. And we have to realize that when we are uh, talking about loved ones that are far away from God. There's a spiritual battle and prayer is a effective tool uh, when it comes to overcoming the adversary. He says, hey, the adversary has desired to sift you as wheat, but what does he say? I have prayed for you. That's why I encourage you to pray for people that you love that are far away from God, because Jesus is praying for his friend Peter. And he prays this prayer, that your faith would not fail. I think that's a great prayer. Pray they come to their senses. Pray that their faith not fail. Pray that their faith is strengthened. Pray that God will bring the right people around them to have a conversation of faith. Maybe not you, but uh, someone else that would come into their life. Pray against 
the adversary that comes to kill and to steal and destroy and say, Lord, may faith overcome the adversary and that they would turn back. And he says to Peter, when you turn back, I want you to strengthen your family, your brothers and your sisters. And that's our prayer, that people would turn back to God. They would strengthen, they would be strengthened by God, and then they would be able to share that strength with others. So maybe we could just take a, a, a moment to pray for people that you love, brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a husband, a wife, and just pray these kind of prayers. So let's pray together just for a moment. Lord, we just simply uh, take a moment to pray for family members that are on our heart, that are far away from God. We pray that they would come to their senses in the name of Jesus. We want them to wake up from darkness and come into the light. We pray that they would return to the Father's house and find grace and mercy and forgiveness. We pray that their faith wouldn't fail, that they would turn back to God again, and that they would be strengthened and give that strength to others. We bless our family members. We bless those we love. And we pray that everyone would be able to come into that ark of safety. We are praying for you. We'd love if you would uh, subscribe. Uh, to the channel. Uh, we'd love that you would send in questions and so we could just take some time and talk about what's on your heart and what's in your mind. Hey, thanks for spending this time with us. God bless you.